Um, this video really applies to principles of economics, um, operations management, and the graduate course in quantitative methods. It's the crazy uncle problem, basically, where you're sitting around a dining room table and your wacky uncle, crazy uncle, crazy sister, uh, crazy cousin comes up, always comes up with some, hey, I got an idea to get rich and we're going to make this product and we're going to sell it and we're going to make millions, millions. And um, here's a back of the envelope way. It's just a very simple model to do a first uh, level analysis to see if there's any validity to the idea in question. So it's linear costs and revenue functions. Well, linear cost uh, revenue and profit functions, really, because we're doing all three. This is a simple model, like I said, for doing that back of the envelope calculation for to evaluate the economics of producing and selling a product. In this model, there are three constants. Fixed costs, C sub F. The costs incurred if the pro if no products are produced. Like if you don't produce anything, like I always say at North Park, if an entire month North Park is closed, they're not teaching any classes, North Park still has to pay some bills. They have mortgages on buildings, loans on uh, equipment they've leased. They have to pay security. They have to pay salaries of people, professors and staff that are not uh, working, actually teaching classes, they still have to pay their salaries for those months. And these costs include rent, mortgage, loan payments, staff salaries, not labor, uh, utilities, those kinds of things. Then there's variable costs, C sub V. So cost sub V is variable, cost sub F is fixed cost. These costs are the costs needed to produce one unit of the product. These costs include materials, energy, and labor. So if I'm producing some sort of gadget, uh, whatever the gadget may be, how much raw pack materials go into that? How many subassembly, procured subassemblies, value goes into it? How many labor hours are required to, to process and assemble the, the thing? And if, if it's energy intensive, how much energy is required to uh, do that production? And lastly, there's the price at which you sell it. Two costs and a price. Really simple model. There's only one variable in the model. Q, the quantity of product that you sell. I've put here as the quantity of products that you've produced and sold. So well, the assumption is, is that, well, here are the assumptions. Only one product is produced and sold. Well, in reality, very few companies sell only one product. The amount of product produced equals the amount of product sold, Q. Why do I say that? Because I don't want to deal with inventory or lost sales. And oftentimes, there's definitely a mismatch. Companies rarely sell what they think they're going to sell, especially in high volume consumer products, which is my background anyway. So the amount of product produced equals the amount of product sold. In reality, when the number produced, the number produced rarely equals the number sold. If the number produced is greater than the value of the number of products sold, inventory is created. You have excess inventory. You have leftover inventory at the end of the period. And periods usually are the length of a month. Uh, when the number sold is more than the number produced, lost sales are created. You lose sales. If one thing upsets salespeople and C-level executives, it's lost sales. Having a little excess inventory isn't so bad. If you have a lot of excess inventory, you'll get the attention of the finance and C-level and CEO eventually, but you'll get everybody's attention if they sell more than you produce. But in this model, we don't worry about that. So there are three equations associated with these three constants and this one variable. The variable is in every equation. Q, Q, Q. 
We have a cost equation, a revenue equation, and a profit equation. Cost is variable cost plus fixed cost. Variable cost is dependent on how many you, you produce and sell. So it's Q times variable cost. If I produce one, I get CV. If I produce two, I get two times CV. If I produce three, et cetera, you got it. The fixed cost is just a fixed cost. And you should be doing this all in the same time period, either a month or a year. So the problems vary on monthly or annual, depending on, uh, on the context. So it's variable cost times quantity plus fixed cost. The revenue is much simpler. And it's a linear equation, mx plus b. The slope is cv. The y-intercept is cf. And the x is q. The revenue equation is price times quantity, period. There is no intercept. If you don't sell anything, you don't make any sales. So if you sell one, you get P. If you sell two, you get two P, two times the price. Profit, now notice it's a P here and a P here, but it's capital P versus small p, is revenue minus cost. So if I replace these, these equations, the left-hand side with the right-hand side, I get P times Q minus the quantity CVQ plus CF. So I get revenue minus cost. Now notice, the distributive law still works. That negative sign distributes. Minus, minus. And the distributive sign works the other, the distributive law works the other way. I can factor a Q out of, out of these two terms. So I get P, the, the I get the P minus CV, that parentheses, times the quantity minus the fixed cost. This term here, P minus CV, is called the margin. If this margin is less than zero, you will never make a profit. That means every one you sell, you will lose more money. You will only have a loss. You've heard people say, it's okay, we'll make it up in the volume. This is only true when the margin is positive. In other words, P minus CV is greater than zero. Note, revenue is equal to sales. Profits are revenues, which are sales, minus cost. For some reason, some students make the mistake of equating revenue and profits as the same thing. You have to learn the difference. Really, you should memorize the difference so you'd never embarrass yourself ever, either in the classroom or in a career. So there's a couple things that we're interested in. One, we'd like to know, based on all these equations that we have, when we break even. Well, when does that happen? Break even point is where the profit is zero. So this equation, profit equals revenue minus cost equals zero. This means that BEP is a quantity Q where R of Q equals C of Q. If I add C of Q to both sides. Yes, you have to remember some algebra to be able to do some of these. So if I set this equal to zero, and I have the margin times the quantity minus the fixed cost, I add the fixed cost to both sides, and I divide both sides by the margin, so my BEP quantity is fixed cost divided by margin. If Q is less than the break-even point, if you sell less than a break-even point, profits are negatives, you have a loss. If you actually sell exactly at the break-even point, profits are zero. That's in fact the definition of break-even point. If you sell more than a break-even point, profits are positive. So you'd always like to know when you break even. So let's look at some examples. The MPU company makes pencils for doing uh, economics and ops exams. Materials and labors are for each pencil is 25 cents. The monthly fixed costs are $2,400 and a pencil sell for 40 cents. What are the cost, revenue, and profit equations? And we should make profit. I'm not capitalizing them all or not. Well, I will ask you that question on an exam. Some people will just give me 
these equations. No, that's not what I want. If I ask you that in the context of a story problem, I want you to put the actual numbers of the story problem into the equations. So my variable cost is 0.25. My selling price is 0.4. My fixed cost is 2400. So I put those in. 25 cents times the quantity plus 2400 is my cost equation. 40 cents times the quantity is the revenue. And then my margin, which is 40 cents minus 25 cents, which is going to be 15 cents right here, minus 2400 is going to be my profit equation. What's my break even point? I have to sell 16,000 pencils to break even. I want to have to sell pencils to a lot more than North Park students uh, to hit that break even point. What is the revenue at break even? So the R at 16,000, I take my 40 times 16,000, and I have a revenue of 6,400. That's also the cost, because remember at break-even, revenue and cost equal each other. Okay, how many pencils? Now, okay, we know what we have to break even, but I don't want to break even. I want to make $10,000 a month so I can make $20,000, $120,000 a year. That's more fun than just breaking even. In this case, I take the profit equation instead of making it equal to zero, I make it equal to 10,000. I add 2,400 to both sides, and I get 12,400 equals 15.15Q. I divide by 0.15, and now I have to sell 82,667 pencils. I round it up. Wow, that's going to take uh, some effort. I'm probably selling pencils all over the place. So if I take my two equations and graph them, this is done in Desmos. The red one is my, red should actually be the, the cost equation, but it's in this case, it's actually the revenue equation. And I see that the, the blue one is my cost equation. And notice that the slope is the variable cost. And the slope of the uh, revenue equation is the price. It has to be steeper. The price, the, the, the slope of the revenue equation has to be steeper. So P has to be bigger than the slope of the cost equation, which is the variable cost. So P has to be bigger than variable cost because at the beginning, you're losing money. You don't sell anything, you lose $2,400, which is your fixed cost. As I sell more and more and more and more, my revenue is growing faster then my cost is at some point it crosses over at the break even point and then I start making money. So it's a very simple and fundamental concept. Here's another example. This is a make versus buy variation of this. Suppose a third party supplier offers to make pencils at 31 cents each. Well, if we look at our original problem, it costs us only 25 cents to make pencils. At 31 cents, well, it costs me more, but if I'm operating down here, it may be cheaper for me to buy the pencils because here I'll be losing money. And since I don't have any fixed cost, if I buy the pencils from someone else, that's why people outsource, they get rid of their fixed cost. And, and they look at their variable costs, of course, as well. At which point is it more economical to make versus buy? Well, this is like a BEP problem, except it involves two cost equations. We have our original cost equation, and this new, this is the make, and I put P for procure, I'm probably confusing it by putting too many P's, equals 0.31Q. There is no fixed cost because they've actually worked it into the price of their pencil they're selling it to me. Remember, I don't have any fixed costs here when I'm selling it to someone else because I've theoretically come up with a price to sell it at that will accommodate my fixed cost. So I can make or buy. What should I do? Well, I want to find the break-even point of these two equations, where the two equations are equal to each other. So I have 0.31Q equals 0.25Q plus 2400. I subtract 25Q from both sides and get 0.06Q equals 2400, divide by 0.06, at 40,000 pencils. So I draw the same kind of graph. If I make, if, if I sell less than 40,000 pencils, 
it's advantageous for me to buy the pencils from the other supplier. If I, if my needs or my forecast and my sales are going to be more than 40,000 pencils, then it's more advantageous for me to make the pencils. And that's the small introduction to this simple but kind of a powerful back of the envelope concept for seeing is a business ID, idea a valid idea or not. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you again soon.